In this video, we're going to introduce the concept of the mole and molar mass. Now, when I'm talking about moles, I'm not talking about these furry animals, right? Um, we're talking about something completely different. Now, I'll be honest, when I, when I tell people I'm a chemistry professor and if they're one of those students that did not enjoy chemistry, a lot of people always point to this concept as when their understanding of chemistry got derailed. They'll often say something like, you know, oh, I was doing fine until he started talking about moles or whatever, you know. And so I, I always and I always concede that, yes, this is a rather abstract concept. You may have already wrestled with it in your high school chemistry class. Um, it is an abstract concept. And so if, if you don't understand it initially, don't feel bad. But this doesn't have to be the end of your chemistry journey. This doesn't have to be the end of your understanding of chemistry. In fact, I think this is a great tool to understanding chemistry on a deeper level. So follow me and hopefully this will will make some sense. So what is a mole? So think back to this idea of counting things by weighing, right? Um, the mole is also built on carbon 12, right? So we had the atomic mass unit in the previous video that was built on the on carbon on pure carbon 12, right? So is the mole. The mole is going to be the number of atoms in a pure sample of carbon 12. So this is the number of atoms in specifically 12 grams of pure carbon 12, right? So even from the definition here, we can see that there is an intrinsic link between this definition of the mole and our atomic mass unit defined for atoms, right? So the mole is gonna be the number of atoms in 12 grams of pure carbon 12. And that number is what we call Avogadro's number, right? So Avogadro's number. And you'll be hearing this guy's name a lot. Uh, Amadeus Avogadro was a very uh, influential early chemical scientist and a lot of his theories and, um, you know, a lot of his theories and work still prevail today in our understanding of the chemical sciences. So one mole, so basically Avogadro's number is the answer to this question. What, what is that number of atoms in 12 grams of pure carbon 12? That's Avogadro's number, which is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, right? That's the number of atoms in 12 grams of pure carbon 12. So anything that hits this number, this is known as one mole, right? One mole of atoms is 6.02 times 10 to the 23 atoms, right? So this is the same way that people use when they talk about like eggs or things that are sold in a dozen, right? A dozen donuts is 12 donuts, right? One mole of atoms is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, right? So, you know, and, and I remember when I was a student of chemistry, you know, when I was first learning general chemistry, this is the first thing that really blows your mind, just how large this number is. This is an astronomically large number, right? So, so to put it in perspective, right, the Earth has been, uh, has existed for over 4 billion years, right? If you were to take that into seconds, right? So those 4 billion years into seconds, um, the earth has not existed for one mole of seconds yet, right? It, we haven't, we're nowhere near uh, one mole of seconds as far as the existence of this planet that has existed for 4 billion years, right? So it's, earth has existed for like four times 10 to the 17, 18, something like that seconds. That's nowhere near one mole of seconds. So the way that I want you to see, to think of the mole, right, is as a bridge. This really bridges our understanding of the macroscopic and the microscopic world, right? It puts, it, it adds that dimensionality for the microscopic into macroscopic samples. 12 grams, that's something that we have a, an appreciation for in our microscopic world, right? This large number is something that we do not. And so this, this idea, this concept of the mole is what really serves as the bridge between the, the microscopic and the macroscopic. So like I mentioned in, de in the definition, right, we, we see that since we're still using pure carbon 12 as our base, 
uh, here to establish the number of atoms that constitute one mole, there is an intrinsic relationship between uh, the atomic mass unit and the mole, right? So basically for one AMU, so we talked about uh, atomic mass unit as its abbreviation is one AMU. One AMU is one gram per mole, right? Or this is usually abbreviated as, you know, the G for grams and mole is abbreviated as MOL. So one AMU is one gram per mole, right? And this is very powerful. This gives you a, a direct way, right? A unit that that directly bridges the macroscopic and the microscopic, right? One mole being, you know, an astronomically large number of particles that make up that that dimension and grams being something that we have an appreciation for in the real world, right? So in the macroscopic world, I should say. Okay, so let's look at an example, right? Let's say you have a sample of zirconium. Let's say specifically you have 10 grams of zirconium. Right, you got 10 grams of zirconium. Zirconium's chemical symbol is ZR. If you look up the atomic mass of zirconium, it's going to be 91.22 atomic mass units. Now that we have this link between the atomic mass unit and the mole, we know that the atomic mass of zirconium is 91.22 grams per mole. So let's say you were interested in saying, okay, I've got a 10 gram block of zirconium. I want to know how many atoms are in that 10 gram block of zirconium. How many zirconium atoms make up that sample of zirconium? Well, you can use this atomic mass to get there. The first thing you want to answer is how many moles are in 10 grams of zirconium. And you can use the atomic mass in order to do that. Again, making sure that your units cancel out here. We know there's 91.22 grams of zirconium in one mole of zirconium. Right, and we get that from the atomic mass. Now you can, um, you know, nowadays you can Google atomic mass of zirconium is the first thing that pops up in a little uh, sponsored window. Or you can obviously look at a periodic table, find zirconium, and track down its atomic mass. While I'm not against using the first method, uh, if you want to Google it, Google it. Just to get some experience with where elements are on a periodic table, if you're looking for atomic masses, I would prefer that you uh, try to look on a periodic table just to get some practice with it um, so that you're familiar with the layout of the periodic table. It's, it's good to establish that early on. Okay, so doing this, uh, this math, we get 0.11 moles of zirconium, right? So then again, this kind of puts into perspective how, you know, how huge this number is. We got 10 grams of zirconium, you know, we're, we're, not, we're nowhere near one mole of zirconium atoms, right? So, so now that you have the number of moles of zirconium, now you want to take this number of moles and you want to convert that to atoms, Right. How are we going to do that? Well, we can use Avogadro's number. Right. This is the amount of atoms in one mole. So if we start with our number of moles of zirconium, we got 0.11 moles of zirconium. Right. And we know that in one mole of zirconium. There's going to be Avogadro's number of atoms of zirconium. Right. So when you do this, uh, do this math, you get six point six two times 10 to the 22 atoms of zirconium. Right. So this answers the question of how many atoms would be in this sample, this 10 gram sample of zirconium. Right. And so this is a very standard calculation that you're going to have to get used to doing. This is the entire reason why we stress dimensional analysis so much early in this class and being able to do unit conversions, because we've we've now introduced a new dimension. Right. Moles. And you're going to have to get comfortable with being able to to just 
effortlessly go back and forth between grams and moles and atoms and molecules, right? So that that's going to have to be a part of your toolkit. So making sure you get a, a significant amount of practice with problems like this uh, is going to be very important.